Hello guys, my name is Armin. In today's video, learning AutoCAD, it's all about dimensioning. We're gonna go through the dimension panel. Uh, we wanna go through all the dimensions that are available to us and we can use to provide a specific dimension to a different objects or the geometry that we create in AutoCAD. This is a very helpful tool. It's going to give you a lot of info. We're going to share some tips and tricks on what's the best practice to use the dimensions in AutoCAD. Let's jump into AutoCAD so we can take a look at it together. In today's episode, we want to take a look at everything about dimensioning and how we can do dimensioning in AutoCAD. So for that, we're going to head to the Annotate tab and we're going to go to the Dimensioning panel. So I want to first start with the Linear. So this is a drop down that we're going to go through all of them, but let's just start from the Linear. So Linear means you put the distance or dimension on X and Y direction. So let's say if I have the linear, I can kind of create, uh, put the a node over here, and then specify the other corner, and basically I get the dimension. Out. That's one method, and the other method that this is kind of a tip I want to show you. So if you click on linear, and then hit enter, it basically put dimension on all the objects. So you don't need to do anything. You basically just click on the objects and then drag it out. So if I go linear, enter let's say i want to do this i kind of select this hole and then you can see exactly it's going to give me the dimension for that area so that's the linear part if you have the x y direction but how would you see if you have um, a line that is diagonal like this and you want to put a direction on so when i use the linear it's going to give me the x and y based on where my node is going to go right so if i want to put this on top it's going to go over there and if i go linear again and i want to show a distance for this side i'll be able to do it for the other way just by moving your mouse in the direction that you want while you're on linear dimensioning is going to give you the distance but if you want to get the actual uh, diagonal you, you need to use the align so align is going to basically align it to any object that you have with any dimension so right now this is a dimension that i want to put on and it's going to give me the align so this is kind of make sure you guys are aware if you want to get the x and y go to linear if you want to get the align exactly give you the diagonal uh distances or dimension you can go to align and put it on so the next one is going to be angular. This is easy. You basically need to just select two items and then you'll be able to get the dimension. So if I want to put this is 45 degree, if I go outside, it's going to give me the 135 degree and it shows me what I'm measuring you know based on this so this is kind of depends on how you want to place it you'll be able to kind of move it in a different direction and then place them let me do it one more time so you guys see i got a 45 on the other side and if you want to show the outside i'm going to put 135 is going to show me the outside angle as well so the next one is going to be the arc length so this is basically showing me the arc length right so i want to show you this so this is an ellipse it, when i click on it it doesn't do anything right so you see what it says it says select arc or polyline arc segment so if you have a circle if you have an any different type of object it's not going to give you that length it has to be polyline or arc so if i go on this arc you can see how it shows up there you go it basically give me the distance of this arc so it's not going to give you anything around the circle ellipse it has to be polyline or arc in order to get that dimension from so if i want to basically show a different dimension this is how you will be able to kind of see this is an important part arc length must be arc or polyline to give you that dimension but if you want to do the radius yeah for sure that's going to be circle right so the circle is going to give you the r what it has exactly and also you'll be able to get the diameter of it right so this is the, the diameter of the 
circle that you'll be able to see exactly what it is. Again, I want to make sure that you understand that these are working for the circle. It's not going to work on the ellipse. So you see, it says arc or circle. I'm clicking on it, but it doesn't show me anything. And it's telling me select arc or circle. So keep that in mind. So what you need to do with this, yeah, for sure. You need to kind of use your specific dimension, your align, and any other area, any other uh, measurement that you have in terms of the align or linear, you'll be able to kind of get those dimensions. Uh, the next one that we have is jog. So the jog is going to be used when you do not have enough space. And you can see in the picture, basically just show a, a little bit of the jog um, uh, and then going outside. So, so if I go right here, you can say jog dimension for circles and arc, right? So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to selecting the arc that I have and it says enter the point to override. I'm going to do it the back. So you can see basically how uh, basically jog and put that uh, dimension on it. It depends how you want to move it around, uh, you know, and then kind of make it nice and clean based on your layout that you want. And you can, let me just put it here and then done. So it's going to create that jog just to change the layout and only works for circle or arc. So the next one, it's the ordinate. Basically, it's give you the coordinates for a certain point. So you can see right here, basically, you select a point. It's going to give you um, a, a coordinates from the absolute coordinate. And where that is, is that 0, 0 right here. So if I get close right there, uh, let's say I want to select this corner. So if I go this way, this is what I'm getting. If I go this way, this is what I'm getting. So it's basically kind of give you the actual ordinates from a certain location, and you'll be able to kind of uh, get that coordinates for the center point or corners or whatever you want based on the absolute, which is absolute ordinates right here. So these are basically all that we have on this that you guys will be able to use. The next one is just going to be the, the quick. So this is quickly create a series of uh, dimension for the selected object. So I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to say I want to do here. Right. So as soon as I do that, um, it basically create a dimension for me. Right. So it's you click. Um, whatever the object you want, select it, and enter is going to go to the end. So I don't have to do this side and then specify this side and then this side to get the dimension. You basically select the object and it's going to give you the quick. So if I go back here again, I'm going to select this, I'm going to hit enter, uh, it's going to give me a dimension for this piece. So you can see easily, basically, just you kind of click on it and give you that quick dimension. The next one, we're going to look at the continuous and the baseline. So in order to activate this, you need to go back to your align and start the base uh, dimension. So we have to have something that we can start from there. So this is going to be, let's say, my base. Right now, I'm going to go to continue. So when I continue, it picks up exactly where that one ends, and I can just go and click on any areas that I have. So I'm going to click here. Let's say click here, here, here. And you don't have to even stop. You can keep going uh, whatever you want. It's just, you know, keep adding dimensions, you know, just going wherever you want. And the other one. Uh, that you can use over there is the baseline. So the baseline continuous is going to go back to back. The baseline is going to measure everything from the starting point. So for starting base, I want to go back to linear, do the same thing here. Let me select, go back here, select this point, this point. So I'm going to establish where the, my base is. I'm right now go to the base. So as soon as click on it, you know where it snaps to, right? So I can kind of click on the areas. It's the same as the continuous, but the problem, this one with the continuous, is it, it's not a problem. It's basically the difference is starting from the origin. So it basically give you a dimension from the first point. It's not going to give you a continuous dimension. And this one's going to go forever as well. And it's going to give you a measurement of everything from this point that you have.
So these are the two items that if you want to have different dimension back to back, you can kind of use this continue. And if you want to get the dimension from the first point to at multiple points, you'll be able to use the base. So right now, let me put a dimension between this area and this area. Okay, so we're good. So right now, if I want to break this dimension because it's going through an object, this is where you need to go. So this one breaks or restores the dimension and extension line with the cross the object. So I'm going to click on this one. It's going to just select the dimension. I'm going to select that and then just press enter. So as soon as press enter, you see how basically uh, break those. And if I have any dimensions and then I kind of move the dimensions inside that line is going to adjust the breaks with the dimension. You can see how basically I'm going to move those and it's going to adjust that basically dimensioning within uh, the pipe that I have right there, like this pipeline or the door. If I move it, it's going to break these lines and this line is going to be broken based on the original object that you selected. So anything that's within that object, if you keep moving it, the line is gonna move with it and keeps breaking it to um, kind of show the not going through the object. Uh, this one is gonna adjust the spacing between the linear lines. So you can see if you have two lines close to each other, you can select them and then provide a proper spacing. It's gonna give it, and this one I wanna show you is gonna add a dimension, it's gonna add a jog, right? It's basically indicate the break in the objects being dimension. So it, then it's pretty easy how it works. You click on and then enter, and you can see it's basically just show that uh, drawing technique and, and the actual break in your dimensioning uh, that you have. Um, the other one right here, these are mostly used for inspection, but just want to show you what it is real quick. So this is the inspection dimension. It's going to add to your dimensioning. So let's say you have some uh, um, geometry that you created and you want to make sure that everything has been inspected and good to go. So you select on that. You want to basically first select a measurement that you want. So let's say we... Um, Double check these. This is good to go. I'm going to go over here. It's going to open it up. You can pick what type you want. And then if you're 100% inspected, good to go. And as soon as click on it, it's going to add a basically inspection to it. These are basically the same thing that's kind of following. This one is going to update the dimension of the objects and this one is going to associate any dimension to the new object so these are mostly everything about the dimensioning that you guys need mostly you are working with these panel that we went through quick is going to give you a little bit more understanding of how to do it faster and then baseline and continue and then these are mostly for like a drawing techniques that you can add when you want to generate your drawing and show it to a um, uh, a, a, a end user and what the actual drawing looks like hope that you guys enjoyed today's video if you like the content please make sure to subscribe and leave a like and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching